All right. Civil engineer is most likely going to be the project team member that completes this documentation. Strategies, building an urban area. There you are. All right. What's a challenge here for Iowa? Yes. There aren't that many urban areas that are that dense. Exactly. You know, if I would, if uh, I live in Boone County, I don't know if there is any area that would that would qualify. I mean, you'd have to be right downtown. Maybe you could meet this. Uh, might be challenging. You know, the ten services also might be challenging uh, to meet. This isn't one that you could meet everywhere. And it's not like, you know, if I'm if if I have an owner that's got to develop in. Let's, let's, let's stick with the Boone example. In Boone, they may not be able to meet this one at all, right? Well, so what? It's voluntary. So you've got to achieve your point somewhere else. Brownfield redevelopment. All right, Brownfield. What is a Brownfield? Anyone? What's a Brownfield? Contaminated site. Okay. Absolutely. Rehabilitate sites where development is complicated by environmental issues. There is our intent. Okay, our requirements. Develop on a site documented as contaminated by either one of the two. Option one, develop on a site documented as contaminated by means of an ASTM E1903-97 Phase 2 environmental assessment. Anyone heard of a Phase 2 assessment? Okay, maybe not. All right, this um, Probably um, those who might be watching this that have been in the industry a little longer, a phase two assessment is fairly common if you're talking about some type of contaminated site. All right? Now, either you've done the phase two, which is fairly expensive and time consuming, or develop on a site defined as a brownfield by local, state, or federal government agency. It has to be a government agency. It's not brownfield just because the civil engineer said it was or just because the owner thinks it is. That's not good enough. It has to be a federal agency or you've done the phase two site assessment. One of the two. Now, you also have to, whatever the contamination is there, it has to be remediated. Now, usually when people think of brownfields, the image that comes to mind is we've got some 55 gallon drum of glowing goo that's slowly leaking out of a rusting barrel right? It's not necessarily that bad. It could be lead-based paint. It could be asbestos. All right, so not that those aren't serious things that do need taken care of, but it might not be as horrible as one might think it is. For example, one of the projects that I did, um, there were economic reasons to develop on it. The state of Iowa uh, laboratory rests on part of what's uh, DMAC, the DMAC campus. Does anyone know what was on the DMAC campus before it became DMAC? The reason that it sits at uh, Ordnance Road and Magazine Road run through those? It used to be the old Des Moines Ordnance Plant. During World War II they produced uh, 30-06 shells and uh, howitzer rounds, I think. Okay, in the soil there were things like nitrocellulose, arsenic, lead, fun stuff. Of course, they got a lease for like a dollar for a hundred years on it. You know, so, so don't think of, all right, brownfield, it's totally unfeasible to develop on. There could be other economic reasons to do it. Now, I'm not saying an owner should go around shopping for a brownfield just because it gives you one point for a lead, not at all. But if it is available, it does count. Um, it does give you preferences. It encourages owners to develop on a site that might have some issues. Um, the tax savings and property cost savings, obviously, you know, that's a market-driven question. LEED doesn't give you a tax incentive. That might also happen, though. Uh, definitely, you need to coordinate your site development plans with re whatever remediation activity is necessary. Civil engineer is probably going to create uh, complete this league credit template. This could drastically impact the way that a building is built, and just make sure an owner is aware of the risks and potential costs before going after a greenfield or a brownfield site. Okay. 
All right. Alternative transportation, public transportation access, SS credit 4.1. Our intent, reduce pollution from land development impacts, non-mobile use. Uh, there's two options here. Option one, a half mile of a commuter rail, train, or subway station. Half mile of, of rail, train, or subway station. How many sites does that apply to here in the state of Iowa? To about zero. Okay, no subways here. Okay, so we got to go for option number two. Quarter mile of two or more bus lines. Now, let me, let me define what a bus line is. Here in Ames, you could have one bus stop where maybe the red route and the yellow route both stop at. That's two bus lines. These are not stops. These are bus lines. What's the challenge here, though? What becomes complicated about this particular one? Oh, and by the way, a school, a school bus could count as one of these lines, all right? Like public school, all right? All right. Anyone? What's our challenge? What's our challenge? Yes. It says it's measured from the main entrance. Uh-huh. Would that affect orientation, maybe, possibly? Uh, it could. It could, absolutely. Right? What else is our challenge? More challenges, though. That's a very good point. If the bus lines or stops change during the application process, and it, there aren't two anymore? Well, that's true. That could definitely happen. You definitely want to talk with coordination with uh, your local agencies that are administering that. What else? Anything? How many places in Ames even, I mean, in, in, in the, in the uh, uh, Iowa area, we are probably talking about either Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, or the Regent Schools that even have bus lines. How about here in Ames? Let's just use Ames as an example. How many parts of town are going to have two lines by them? Not many. Exactly. This, this might be a very, very narrow part of town, most likely the center of town, once again pushing us towards, towards developing in urban areas. Um, this might be a pretty specific area where just because Cyride stops there doesn't mean we have two bus lines. Okay? We, you, you need to carefully look at this. This is probably going to be toward, you know, um, towards the center of town kind of thing. All right. Even if the city has a bus route, doesn't necessarily mean it will qualify. Let's talk exemplary performance. If you meet, this is an example where if you meet multiple options, if you meet option one and option two, you get one point extra for exemplary performance. One point, not this is worth six points to get this credit. But if you meet both options, that's not an additional six. That's an additional one under innovation design. A test question might ask, give you a scenario, and it asks you how many points could you earn from a project, you know, and, and, and list one that has a couple of bus routes and a subway, and they might give you distances. Maybe it's a half mile to a commuter rail, a half mile to, to a bus stop with two lines, and then ask you how many points do you get? What would be the answer? Six, because you'd have to remember that it's a quarter mile to the bus routes. Right? So the, the, the facts, the figures, the stuff you got to memorize would be half mile to commuter rail, quarter mile to two or more bus lines then you need to understand what exemplary performance is for that bonus point. Any questions on that? Right? It does make, um, <clears throat> does make uh, the exam challenging. Okay? All right.